April marks the beginning of flood awareness and the flood season in the city of Boulder. And today we're at the Boulder Emergency Operations Center to learn about what does the city and the county do for flood awareness and monitoring. And we're here with Michael Chard, director of the Emergency Operations Center, to learn a little bit more about what the EOC does. Michael, why do we have an EOC? Well, the EOC really is uh, it's a, it's a facility and it houses a group of people called our multi-agency coordination system. And those are the folks that come in here if there is a large-scale emergency or disaster, and they perform all the work that the EOC will do during such an event. And they come from uh, county employees, city employees, uh, people from nonprofits such as Red Cross or Salvation Army, and uh, even uh, some, some other, uh, other county uh, agencies will come in and help us out. Uh, from different counties if we do have a problem. and So I think in April most of us are thinking about flood awareness and the potential for flooding, mm -hmm. but the Emergency Operations Center really deals with day-to-day uh, -day issues from a hazmat spill to a wildfire. How does that process get started? When do we know that the EOC has an issue? Okay, well what will happen if there is something that impacts the community Usually the communication centers uh, in the county, such as Boulder City Communications and Boulder County Communications, will receive calls from the public or from first responders out in the field that there's a problem. They will then activate the EOC, which is then the Office of Emergency Management, will respond in, open the facility up, make notifications to the critical people that need to be here, and activate our system so that we can handle the communications that need to, be occur need to occur during the incident. We can manage information. We can make sure that we start developing a common operating picture, as we call it, so that everyone responding gets an idea of how big this is, the impact to the community. So we can make real critical decisions very quickly. We can get the resources coming in to provide help to the people that need it most. So we have a 911 call center here at the Emergency Operations Center building by the airport, and we also have one in the city of Boulder? That's correct, yeah. And they're, they're, there are separate facilities, but actually the interoperability or the interconnectivity of the two, they're very seamless operations. So they can back each other up if one system was affected by an emergency, or more importantly, they can work together to increase capacity so we can better serve the community with communications and handling other calls. Because a lot of people don't realize a disaster hits one part of the county or the city, there's still a lot of other calls that are still going on. So it puts a tremendous demand on the, on the uh, communication center that's handling the incident. So they do need some help. So they're very good backups for each other. Okay. And we're standing in the emergency operations center right now, and it's, it's just the two of us. Right. What happens when there's not an emergency? What's going on to make sure the city and county are prepared for disasters? Well, uh, we're the Office of Emergency Management, so there's a, a service and a function we provide. Obviously, during an emergency, all of this gets activated and get real busy handling the emergency, but we serve a role of doing planning. Uh, really, the emergency management is, is about supporting, facilitating, and coordinating the activities of uh, the planning efforts of city and county agencies, making sure that their continuity of operation plans are up to date so if they are impacted that we can still maintain a sense of government and community to the public so that they're able to still get essential services. So we help kind of coordinate all that, help prepare the plans, and, and we really do a lot of hazard mitigation and we prepare for the event. And really we don't handle the, the response too much except out of here, but we have a big role in helping the recovery process of the community after the a disaster or emergency occurs. So I noticed we have a lot of monitors in this room. Yes. And we have local TV stations, news being monitored. We have some big screens as well. Mm -hmm. What are those for? Well, the people that come in here, uh, this is, like I said, a coordination and facilitation center really is what the EOC provides. We'll have people, uh, that, you know, the, the uh, county commissioners, uh, city manager, city council members, the police chief, fire chief, or the sheriff come in, and they're the policy group. They set direction for, for what's happening in the community, and they need information. So a lot of these boards you see around here are all designed to create that environment where they're able to get up-to-date information, see what's going on in the media, to keep sort of a tempo of where things are heading so they can make decisions in making disaster declarations, uh, freeing up resources, and helping allocate resources that are coming in so they're being equally shared amongst the uh, community. So we have about 40 people in this room during the emergency right. that range from the sheriff's office to local police, mm -hmm. uh, public information officers, as well as folks from Red Cross and the hospital. How do they communicate and know what each one is doing? 
Well, we have a, in the digital age, we have a lot of ways of doing that. Obviously, they can use cell phones. We also have a software package here called Web EOC, which is a specific software package that allows us to communicate in a web environment. And then, of course, there's always the old-fashioned telephone and face-to-face -face conversations, which in a lot of cases gets the most done. Okay. And I understand how everyone in here communicates. How does the general public know what's happening? How do we get messages out to say, you know, evacuate the canyon or there's a fire, you, you should leave your home or shelter in place if that might be the case. It's a great question. There's two sort of environments where the community is going to be communicated with. The first one would be under the developing emergency where we need to warn the public to, so they can take action to protect themselves or prepare for the oncoming emergency. Uh, that'll happen through either their home phone being called through what's kind of a emergency notification system. They also we have an Everbridge system which allows people to sign up so they can receive it on their computers or their portable uh, devices. Uh, and we also will use activation systems such as the sirens, which you'll start hearing here. Uh, you may have already heard in April, which is the first Monday of every month at 10 and 7, which is designed to get you to be aware there's something going on to go seek information. And then after that, there's other ways we get hold of you through call centers that will be established and also through a website. We do have a posting, uh, boulderoem.com, which the public can go to to get up-to-date information during an emergency. And we have uh, people like you, the, the public information officers, who take responsibility for keeping current information going into that website and also then directing people to go to other areas through television or the printed media or radio uh, to find centers to where we can post information to help people decide what to do. So once there's an emergency situation in the city or the county, the public should really tune to local broadcast TV and radio stations for breaking news Correct. information. Correct. And that, that would be their best source as well as perhaps having a telephone set up here, but that's not always the case? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And how would someone um, make sure their own family was prepared for an emergency? What, what kinds of steps would we take in advance? Well, a lot of people have, an, uh, they think they pick up the phone, they call 911, and they're going to get the same level of service in an emergency or disaster as they would under normal conditions. And the system we have in the city and county are designed to handle everyday emergencies. You call, you get quick service, it's pretty fast. Under a larger scale emergency or disaster, the system gets overloaded very quickly. So the 911 system is going to be obviously a little slower to respond, so preparedness of the, of the public is most important and it takes time for us to get to you. There's programs such as the CERT program, which the Boulder Office of Emergency Management does uh, go ahead and provide training for if neighborhoods would like to get training on how to be prepared and self-sustained during an emergency. Uh, but really, individual families need to have evacuation plans, where are they going to rally to, which means where are they going to go meet if they have to leave their neighborhood, how are they going to connect with their family members. So information is a great way uh, to prepare yourself first and then decide what level of preparedness you can afford and want to achieve and then go out and find ways to do it. But planning, it's have a plan. That's the first step. And I see you're holding our book here, which uh, I think will give a lot of useful information. So if you need more information on how to prepare your family in advance of an emergency, the Emergency Operation Office has an emergency preparedness guide, which is available at the Municipal Building Lobby at the corner of Broadway and Canyon. Or you can also contact Emergency Operations Center to get a copy here. And later on this month, it should be online. So we've been at the Boulder Emergency Operations Center speaking with Director Mike Chard. Mike, thank you for a quick overview of what the EOC does. You're welcome, Patrick. And if you need more information on that, you can visit boulderoem.com to find out how this uh, center operates and the steps it takes on a regular basis or to get more involved in preparing your family. So we'll be back with more Inside Boulder after this.